Legumes offer a partial solution to issues of increasing fertiliser costs and nutrient deficiency plaguing many northern farmers. University of Queensland Principal Research Fellow Mike Bell says many northern farmers are not getting their nutrient levels right, having to increasingly add phosphorus, potassium and sulphur to their soils in addition to nitrogen, often pushing costs beyond their reach. But solving the problem could mean rethinking their entire cropping system. And we think legumes offer a solution in that area because they're a way of getting nitrogen into the cropping system uh, to try and then allow us to divert money we're now spending on nitrogen for sorghum and wheat and put that into phosphorus, potassium and sulphur to grow legumes and also to support those other grain crops. Dr Bell, who heads up the Soils and Farming Systems Research Team at Queensland's Alliance for Agriculture and Food Innovation, spoke on the subject at the Summer Grains Conference, an event supported by the Grains Research and Development Corporation. He believes the soil fertility situation could be even worse than many farmers realise. The nutrient issues that we're struggling with are these phosphorus potassium issues in particular. The deficiencies are emerging deeper in the profile. So the industry's been soil testing quite shallow and getting a, a, a perhaps a rosier picture of how the, of the soil fertility than is actually going on because a lot of the depletion we're seeing is occurring in that layer underneath. I guess my push for legumes is that we want the rotation effects but we also want the nitrogen that we can get uh, from the legumes as well. And so if that means looking at other species uh, and changing our rotations, I think the time's come when we've got to start seriously looking at it. While the two most common legumes in the north are chickpeas and mung beans, Dr Bell says farmers need to look to less familiar options to maximise benefits to soil fertility. He's interested in the potential benefits of pigeon pea, faba beans and soybeans. We're really interested in a crop like uh, pigeon peas. Um, pigeon pea is, uh, is a crop that's had a couple of incarnations in, in this part of the world, but there's a new set of germplasm out now that is not only determinate but also has insect resistance. And apparently there's some quite uh, significant markets starting to develop in the, in the, um, the Dal, the human consumption area, not, not necessarily in Asia but also in America and Australia. So marketing looks interesting if we can get the crop to perform. One of the key things for the long term sustainability of this cropping system is we've got to get the right nutrients back into this system because if we um, if we continue to stratify our nutrients and we get constrained in the topsoil, then we're only going to be able to perform in good seasons. We don't get them often enough to allow that to happen.